It's Adam here for PC Monitors, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Dell 2719DM. The OSD is controlled by pressable buttons on the underside of the bottom bezel towards the right side. There's also a power button there, and it has a little white, uh, gentle glowing white power indicator with a kind of vertical slit design, which is quite common on modern Dell monitors. If you press the first button, um, or any of the other buttons in fact except the power button, the monitor puts up little icons to show you what each button is assigned to. The first two buttons there are actually customizable, which I'll come on to shortly, and then there's the main menu there, and then there's an exit button. The main menu is laid out in Dell's usual modern style. Uh, not that they really have a, a usual modern style, but uh, one of their usual modern styles. The first section is brightness and contrast. That does what it says on the tin. It allows you to adjust the brightness and contrast of the monitor, depending on which other settings you've got set. Sometimes these are greyed out. Um, input source allows you to select the input source used by the monitor manually, and also allow it to automatically select the input for you. You can reset those to the factory defaults as well. There's colour. This allows you to access the preset modes of the monitor. So there is standard, comfort view, movie, game, warm, cool and custom colour. Most of these are explored in the review. Um, like many preset modes on monitors, some of them are absolutely useless. Standard is useful, comfort view is good, it's a, a low blue light setting, uh, warm is another low blue light setting, and custom colour is useful in particular. You can uh, access the red, green and blue colour channels, which gives you a good amount of flexibility to tweak the white point of the monitor if you need to. You can change the colour input format, you should just leave that on RGB, um, but if you're using, if you have the requirement, you can also set it to YPBPR and you can reset everything here to the factory defaults. Next there's display. You can change the aspect ratio which would be useful if you're running the monitor at a non-native resolution. So there's the standard wide 16x9 which is the actual aspect ratio of the monitor or you can select 4x3 or 5x4 um, obviously this just looks squashed up because I'm running a 16 by 9 resolution, but if you were running a resolution with that aspect ratio, you'd see things without this sort of weird stretching. There's a sharpness control, which changes in increments of 10%. That allows you to adjust the sharpness of the monitor to fine-tune it according to your taste. I find the default of 50% optimal. There's a dynamic contrast setting, which I explore in the review, and that's only available in some of the image presets. Response time setting, normal and fast, um, again explored in the review. Smart HDR, also explored in the review. So this kicks the monitor into a high dynamic range setting, um, so it'll respond to HDR10 content. And when you're in HDR mode, the monitor has a little symbol there that says HDR+. Plus just so you know it's actually running in HDR, the HDR pipeline. And you can reset things here to the factory default with the reset display option as well. Menu settings, you can change the language that the OSD is displayed in, um, change the transparency level, the default's 20%, you can make it more or less transparent depending on your preferences. This is how long after the last button press before the menu automatically disappears in seconds and set that between uh, I think it's 20 seconds and uh, sorry 5 seconds and um, 60 seconds and you can reset the menu part of the menu to the factory defaults as well personalize this allows you to change the shortcut keys, which I was talking about earlier. So you can have these set to preset modes, um, or you can have it actually just go into a specific preset mode. Um, so in my, for my uses, I tend to use custom color. That's with my test settings, I use custom color. You can also set the brightness and contrast, input source, aspect ratio, or smart HDR. So it really just depends which features you use most commonly. Um, I also like to 
use custom view in the evening for relaxing evening viewing. It's a low blue light setting. So now I can quickly change between uh, the custom color preset and the low blue light uh, preset as well, comfort view. And you can see the icons there change depending on what you've got them set to. So that's quite a cool little feature. You can change the power button LED so it's off uh, rather than on when the monitor's on if it's distracting you. You can reset things on this menu to the factory defaults as well. Finally there's others and this has display info um, as a section. This gives you some basic information about the monitor, the model number, the input source that's currently being used, the current resolution and refresh rate, um, and the current HDMI revision. I'll only say HDMI 2.0 if you're using HDR and you've got a compatible GPU. Um, as I mentioned in the review, I on my NVIDIA card, which I've got connected at the moment, um, this can only go up to 74Hz maximum without frame skipping, which is fine. It's for all intents and purposes very similar to 75Hz. On my AMD GPU, 75Hz, no problem. With the AMD GPU, you can all, um, if you've got a compatible AMD GPU, you can also run FreeSync. Um, when you first enter Display Info, the refresh rate listed there, um, if you've got FreeSync active, it might match your frame rate. If your frame rate's within the variable refresh rate range of the monitor. So this is one way you can tell that FreeSync's really working on the monitor. Um, so say your game is running at uh, 65 frames a second, if that says 65 hertz, um, then yeah, it's likely that FreeSync's working. Um, DDC slash CI is part of the plug and play functionality of the monitor. It lets you control it with software, for example, uh, control the OSD with software. There's an LCD conditioning feature and this allows you to get rid of um, mild image retention. It just cycles various different colors on the screen. And I mean, I wouldn't necessarily worry about image retention on this monitor. This is something that um, all Dell, no, not all Dell monitors, but most Dell monitors do actually have this. It's just a ni nice little feature. Um, because contrary to popular belief, modern LCD still can have image retention or burn in as some users call it. And um, in some of my testing with Test UFO, this model did actually show sh uh, some mild image retention, but it was so mild I didn't even have to run the uh, test cycle to get rid of it. I just had to use the monitor normally. And outside of Test UFO, I haven't noticed any image retention on this monitor at all. So that was just a specific test which did cause a little bit of image retention in my case. You can see the firmware revision used, um, service tag, reset others, so reset this part of the menu to the factory defaults or perform a full factory reset and reset everything to the factory defaults. So that's all there is to the OSD on-screen display menu system of the Dell 2719DM. Be sure to check out the full review on PCMonitors.info. There's a link to that in the description of the video and information about how you can support the work that we do.